Hi everyone. This video is all about the strings, okay, of our tennis racket. And it's an area that we don't pay enough attention to. Um, down at the club, a lot of people talk to me about what rackets they should use for their type of game, their type of fitness, their type of injuries, uh, weight of a racket, etc., etc. And once the racket is purchased, we find a lot of people, that's it. We don't talk really a lot more about it. And if you actually think within the game of tennis, the one thing that actually is striking the ball and therefore controlling the outcome a lot are these. Yes, it's to do with your technique and everything that we've talked about in all of the videos, but these actually do pay quite an important role. So first things first, I would like to talk about uh, the type of string that you should be putting into a tennis racket. Um, the professionals, again, we're getting into an area that we don't necessarily need to worry about because unfortunately we're not professionals and a lot of the professionals will use different strings for their mains, which are the, the longer ones, compared to a string in their crosses. And there's many reasons why they might do that. Um, the main strings of a tennis racket are the strings that mainly strike the ball. That's why they call the mains. It's the sh if you're, that racket's brushing up the back of the ball, it's those main strings here that are grabbing that ball and spinning that ball back through the air. And if you watch the tennis players on TV and you'll see them doing this, straightening out those main strings very not so much now and again you will you see the messing around with the cross strings but it's mainly them straightening the main strings so professionals sometimes use different hybrid uh, natural gut strings for the mains and put a polyester synthetic gut into the cross strings for our level I think a synthetic gut polyester string is absolutely spot on um, for the level of play that we play at. So that's with regards to the strings. There's kind of two gauges you can get within strings. You can get a thinner gauge and a thicker gauge. It's usually about a 15 mil thinner gauge and a 17 mil thicker gauge. A thinner gauged string will give you a bit more kind of feel, um, uh, it'll be a bit easier on, on, on the arm. It will be prone to breaking a little bit easier simply because it's thinner. Um, whereas the thicker gauge, it's a bit more robust. It'll last longer. It'll give you a little bit more power. Um, and most polyester um, synthetic gut strings are around about the 17 mil gauge. The next thing really is the tension of what you should have your tennis racket strung at. Now all modern day tennis rackets, somewhere either in the inside of the neck or around the frame of the racket, will have some little details about the tennis racket. So for example, mine are all written in here. It's obviously too small to show on the camera. But to give you an example, I've got the head size, I've got the weight, I've got the beam, I've got the balance, I've got the length, I've got the string pattern, which is 16 to 19. And then the important one, I've got the string tension. And it says between 22 and 26 kilograms or 48 and 57 pounds. Now, that's the recommended tension for the size of the racket head that you've got. So I strongly suggest you stay within the recommendation tension that your tennis racket says. So for example, mine's between 48 and 57 pounds. Then it depends on how you play tennis, number one, and also if you have any issues. So first things to, to consider, if you play tennis and you find you can't generate much power, obviously within the videos that we've done in the past, you have to look at the racket head speed and creating that racket head speed going at the ball and a full follow through, that will help. But what you can do with regards to the string tension is string it towards the lower 
end of that scale so if I wanted more power I've got between 48 and 57 pounds I'd be going to more towards the 48 49 pounds and that gives me a slack attention therefore allows me to be able to hit the ball with more power if I don't have um, any issues with vibration and arms and tennis elbow things and I create enough power myself via my technique then I would maybe look at up in that because a higher tension allows you excuse me allows you to create more control and again if you've got those hard hitting people out there but night you know they, they do it for two or three shots and then that fourth ball goes flying then you maybe just need that racket to be a little bit tighter so it gives you that little bit more control because the strings are strung tighter so it's not getting that bend through the strings and that whip off as much it's just tighter uh, tension uh, and it gives you more more spin and more control obviously the downside of having it the tighter you go is that there's going to be a lot more I wouldn't say, if, I wouldn't say um, vibration going up your arm but the tighter it is kind of the, the, the harder the, the, the tennis racket becomes um, the less give uh, the tennis racket becomes and the other thing having a, a much tighter string pattern is that you're then prone to them snapping more often especially if you, you your tennis is very much a top spin related game then you can break those tennis strings a lot more often the flatter you are therefore those strings are coming just more through the ball instead of up the back of the ball so much then yes you maybe is not gonna have that worry as much however that leads me on to my next point and again it's something that i do get asked about how often should these be restrung if i don't naturally break them and a good rule that i like to stick to is forever however many times of tennis you play per week that's how many times you should restring your t tennis racket per year so to give you an example you're down at the tennis club and you play twice a week you should be restringing your racket every six months once every six months uh, if you play three times a week you should be restringing your racket once every four months kind of get my picture there um, certainly it should be at least once a year why the strings lose their vibrance they they, they lose their the tension does slacken off um, the more obviously pounding they take off a tennis ball so unfortunately um, if you want to get the best out of your tennis racket and very importantly your strings I do recommend that you restring the racket at least once a year um, where do you go to get uh, the rackets restrung well what you're about to see is that we're very privileged down at Nutsford and that one of our members uh, someone called Guy Lang a good friend of mine who is our overall men's captain and he is our men's first team captain restrings rackets for the entire club and he also restrings rackets for the squash section as well Guy is an excellent player and has had uh, over 20 years experience of restringing rackets um, it is extremely uh, uh, well priced within uh, terms of affordability uh, it's very reasonably priced if you want to have a go at getting your racket restrung then when we can get back on the tennis courts come and see me and we can get that done off guy anyway enjoy the video of what you're going to see this is guy restringing a racket as you'll see you start with the mains um, and you work from the middle and you work your way out and then that goes then into the cross strings if you're using one type of string it's approximately about I think it's guy will correct me if I'm wrong here but between 10 and 12 meters for uh, a standard tennis racket but obviously if you were to use uh, one set of strings for the mains he would do that in about six meters tie it off 
and then do the cross strings separately otherwise you just do it all in one go so enjoy the video that's uh, the main points from my point of view with regards to the strings of a tennis racket yes you should be renewing them if you don't break them that often at least once a year take care